Welcome. I've been asked a number of times how to create a single shortcut that will trigger multiple actions. So here's a quick way of looking at it. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a, an input. In this particular case, it's going to be an audio input. Now what we'll do, so that I can get all the sound going under any visuals that we have, is I'll turn off all of the uh, settings. As you can see, sound is working. So, now to create a shortcut. The first shortcut. We go here and we'll add the shortcut. We could find it uh, as a keyboard shortcut, but instead we're going to fi find it by press simply press pressing it. We'll set the function. In this case, it's going to be audio, and the input it's going to control. And we'll simply put a title on and description, and now we'll set the color so that on the web interface, when we use that, we see it as a color. And I'm going to leave it as a local shortcut. So now we can test it. So what you can see there is it's turning audio on and off, which is what we wanted to do. But what we also wanted to do is to play. So one technique, there are others, but one technique we can use is to set another shortcut. In this particular case, we're going to use a function key. Now most computers only display functions 1 to 12. So we're going to use one of the other function keys that isn't visible. So now this function is going to set the input to start playing. And again we remember to set it on the input. We'll put some text in there so we can see it in the shortcut, li shortcut list. And again we're just going to simply use as a local shortcut. So there it is. Now you can see it's turning it on, turning it off, but it isn't turning on the actual sound. So now what we need to do is to create a relationship between those two shortcuts. So we go to this one will turn it off so we only see the one button in the short and the panel. And now what I'm going to do is go to the advanced tab, find the shortcut that we've previously set up, which is F13, add that and OK it to save it and OK that panel. So now when we click the button, it starts to play. And when we click it again, you can see it turns it off as well. Now let's add, this time, a video. In this particular case, a little landscape scene. What we're now going to do is to associate those previous shortcuts with the video. So we'll use another function key and we're going to simply tell it to go to uh, a fade. So we could have used the could have used the simple on off in the input, but here we're actually going to do a transition. And again, so we can see it in the shortcut list, we'll put uh, a bit of text in here as well. And we're not going to see that in the web browser. So now, Having set up the next one, we go back to the original shortcut. We're going to find F13. 
14 in this particular case. Add that and OK that. So if it all works, there it is. The clip starts, the music starts, and away we go. But what happens when it gets to the end of this particular clip? But we want to, to stop playing the clip and we want to stop playing the music. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to set up some triggers. Triggers allow us to automate actions at the end of a particular event. So we go into the main settings page, we hit the triggers and we're going to do an on completion one. Quite simple, we want it to fade to the preview window. There it is. But we also want it to deal with the audio. So in this particular case, we're going to ask it to turn the audio off. I'll add that. And we also want it to stop the input playing so the, as well. So we go again, find the appropriate pause, and we set it for the sound input. And add that. But what you'll see there is that in doing that, I've forgotten to set the input for the stop. So I'll just edit that. And now we can test it. One button starts the, the video, starts the audio. And so on. Again, you may just need to click it a couple of times to get the the right sequence going. But there it is, it's working fine. So, next, we need to tidy it up ever so slightly. So we go edit again, and this time we're going to be looking at the play function. That's alright. Instead, we're going to look at the triggers. And now what we want to do is add another trigger. That will restart the, the audio from the beginning. So this time when, when, uh, when we hit the button, the audio is already queued up. And there it is. So it gets the end of the video. It will go back, uh, fade to, to the previous screen. The audio will turn off, and it'll reset, re requeue re up. So, that's how to do it in vMix directly. We can do the same thing using the Panel Builder. Again, this is a free third-party application that you can get by going to the vMix forum and searching for it. The first thing we do is to make certain we have a connection to vMix. 
by putting your uh, IP address in and hitting enter. Next we're going to create a control button in this particular case it's just a very simple simple button and we're going to put some text on there this time however when we go through we're not going to choose audio or anything else we're going to create a script scripting is only available in certain editions of vmix so in this particular case the script is going to replicate all of the the things that we've done with the shortcuts. Remembering that the triggers are on the video input so it will behave that way every time. So the first thing is we're going to set the audio, tell it which input we want to turn on and you'll notice up here in the properties window it's creating the script for us. Now we add another command. In this particular case it'll be the transition. Sorry, the input. And we want it to play and again we tell it which input we want. And we'll do a th final one. after we've tested it. So we'll test that it's going there. It's always a good idea to test your scripts uh, line by line, make certain the first ones are working and then do the other ones. And there it is, it's turning on, which is exactly what we want. But now we have to set the vision to transition in and so we set that. Now here's the thing with Script Builder. You need to have created a new command line. As you can see, it's not working for me. Note, note the error message down the bottom that says no line selected. So create the new line, the new command. Go and decide what you're going to do. In this particular case it should be a transition and we're going to fade it in and tell it which piece we're going to fade and having done that we can now test it and there it's in the audio is turned on And there it is. Quite simple. See you next time.